Let's make a sports motion graphic entirely in Photoshop. Now you may or may not know there's a feature in Photoshop that you can go up to window and enable your timeline. This allows you to create video all within Photoshop. You don't have to know After Effects, you don't have to know Premiere to create a motion graphic. Granted, you will be a lot more limited in Photoshop, but we're gonna see what we can do. I'm gonna close this timeline for now. We're gonna focus on creating our layers for this graphic. We're gonna start with this photo taken by Mitchell May at Championship Weekend this past year, and we're gonna separate the subject from the background. I'm gonna hit W on my keyboard for the quick selection tool, Go to select subject and it should do a pretty good job because we have a nice background blur on this photo. Clean up the selection. Now if you don't know how to cut out a player, go ahead and watch my video on how to cut out a subject. Real basic sports design, you're gonna need it for most graphics. Once you're generally happy with your selection, go ahead and output this to a layer mask. And we're gonna duplicate this layer with command J and delete the mask on the bottom layer just by right clicking on the mask. And now I'm gonna hold command and click on this mask thumbnail. So we're just selecting our subjects again, but on this main image. Now we're gonna remove the players from this layer. So we have a layer of background and a layer of the players. And to do that first, we're gonna rasterize this layer. So we're gonna right click on the layer, go down to rasterize layer, going up to select, modify and expand. We can make a slightly bigger selection just so we make sure we're getting all the parts of these players so five pixels should be good so now we have our marching ants all the way around both cutouts and now we're gonna right click with our quick selection tool still selected right click in the middle and let's go to generative fill generative fill is photoshop's artificial intelligence so it's going to do a slightly better job than content aware fill just like that we have the, the background layer, and then we have our subjects on top. And we can merge the generative fill and the initial background just with Command E once you select both those layers. Call this background, and this is cutouts. So we got our players and the background. I'm gonna move this whole image over just around there. This is gonna give us room to put some text. We'll just do some basic game day text. So let's make a new layer and go to T for our type tool. We will type out game day. We'll do it on two lines. We have this Dharma Gothic bold font, decrease the space between lines and then command T to transform it up. And we can decrease the spacing a little bit more. We can also add a soft black gradient coming from this left edge. So let's make a new layer and go to our paint bucket tool, right click on it, find your gradient tool, and make sure it's set to black to transparent, and we'll just draw out uh, a little faded gradient to make this text pop a little bit more. And maybe we want day to be the same size as game or same width, so we can up the overall size and again, space these out. So we've got big game day text. Let's duplicate this text layer, drag it down, and let's just type out min verse SLC. We'll make this one a good bit smaller and we can hit return and type in 7 p.m. as an example and decrease the space between lines until we can see all of our text. And then let's center all the text vertically. So holding shift, I'm gonna group these, click on my folder icon and then command A to select the whole screen, we can justify middle with our move tool. So I want our animation to eventually open up to this scene right here. We'll have the text, we'll have a, a slowly moving player cutout on background. But before we get to that, I wanna have the two logos kind of clash in the middle and then move over to reveal this main scene. So let's start our animation with this logo clash. I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna hit G for the paint bucket tool. You can hold shift and hit G to kind of toggle through those options. Let's just fill a layer with black. And now if you hit command T and go up to where you see these percentages for width and height, this is how I make a block that's exactly half the width of the screen or half the height. I'm just gonna type 50% into the H. And now we have a block that's exactly half the height. So let's hit Command A, justify this one to the top. We'll duplicate it and then justify the next one to the bottom. And this one we're gonna make blue for Salt Lake. So we've got a blue block on bottom, black block on top. Now let's drag in our logos. So let's 
bring in the Minnesota M logo and we're gonna make this pretty big. And then we'll bring in the Salt Lake Shred circle logo on top. And I'm gonna clip this to the blue block below it by holding option and then hovering in the space and clicking and then same thing with the Minnesota to the black box. And we can add some texture on top of both of these. So I have this like concrete wall. Let's blow it up to there. And I'm gonna clip this to both of the boxes as well. So we can duplicate it, clip it to both, and let's set the blend mode of both walls to screen so we can see what's underneath. And maybe we reduce the fill. And I'm also gonna take this opportunity to make a new layer of the screen as we're currently looking at it. So let's make a new layer Command Option Shift E basically stamps the image and applies it to its own layer. That's gonna come in handy later. Just don't wanna forget about it. I'm gonna convert it for smart filters as well. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for these individual half screen blocks. So let's select all of these layers by holding Shift, Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Now we've got the shred block and then same thing for the wind chill. And we can name these min and SLC. And then we'll call this full one, full matchup. Now we're gonna start animating. Let's hide all the layers for now and just start building. So we can start with our background layer and maybe we do that same concrete wall for the background just so we're starting with something that's not just a plain white screen. I can even flip this one just so it looks a little bit different. Let's go up to our window and timeline to open up our video timeline. We can blow this up and you're gonna click create video timeline or if you don't see that, you can click this drop down. You would either see create frame animation or create video timeline. Video is what we want. So this is our timeline. It has just put all the layers down into this timeline for us. And it's currently set to five seconds. And you can mess with the duration just with this slider if you want things longer or shorter. First thing we're gonna do is have the two logo blocks collide. To do that, let's make sure we're looking at the right ones. We have the Salt Lake City block and the Minnesota block. So we can turn these on. And starting with Minnesota, let's hit this drop down. I'm gonna drag the cursor to the beginning of the sequence. We're gonna click this little stopwatch icon next to transform. This is gonna enable keyframes. So a keyframe, you're basically gonna be moving something from point A to point B using one keyframe to the next keyframe. So these little diamond shapes are gonna indicate keyframes on our timeline. So we got one at the beginning and then we'll do one uh, let's see how 10 frames looks. And this first one, we're gonna move this off of the screen. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the Salt Lake City block. Again, zero frames and 10 frames, those are our keyframes. And then dropping the first one down, so that when you hit play, they come together and meet in the middle. So you can see the whole screen, and this is the speed at which they're gonna move. Maybe we want them to move a little bit faster so we can go back a few frames and select both of these. Now they're going together in seven frames instead of 10. Now the reason why I created this full matchup layer as well is because I wanted a layer that we can kind of shake and move around once these two things come together. So once the logos are together, I'm gonna chop off their duration just by dragging these in and then we're going to resume it with this full matchup layer which we can turn on so they come together and then this full matchup layer takes over as the thing that we're seeing and we're just going to do like some little shaky movements to it to do that let's click the stopwatch on transform again we'll go forward like a couple frames hit command t we can blow it up to maybe 103 percent of its size, just so we can go forward another frame, move it to the right a little bit, the other way as well. I guess that was to the left. I'm just kind of skipping frames and shaking it around just a couple times. Then the last one, we can keep it centered and back to its original size. So we've just got these like jerky movements after the two come together. So that's how it looks like at full speed. After it comes together and shakes a little bit, then I'm gonna swipe the whole thing away to reveal what's underneath, which is gonna be our background layer, the cutouts, and the game day text. So let's play it 
I'm gonna stop it right here, right about there. And this is when we're gonna throw it off of the screen. So let's hit a keyframe to transform it from here to there, and then we'll drag it to the right. With this first keyframe, this is the moment where we're gonna activate the other layers. So I'm gonna turn these on in the layers panel. We're gonna move the start duration over for all of these. We should see as the swipes, it reveals the stuff underneath. So we've got the shake, the swipe, and now we've got our game day. Now we're gonna animate these layers. So starting with the background, we're gonna do this parallax effect. And that just makes it so the background is zooming in slower than the foreground. And by the way, when you go into these keyframes, you're only gonna see position unless the layer is a smart object. So this is a good reminder. Let's go up to filter, convert for smart filters. Now we can rename it background and you'll see we have transform. So we're gonna transform this starting from its normal position and we'll zoom it in to let's say like 105%. And so it's just gonna slowly zoom. We can even drag this to the very end. So it's just slowly zooming throughout. Now before we scale up the cutouts, for whatever reason, Photoshop timeline can't seem to deal with moving masks, like the mask stays stationary if I'm trying to move the layer. There might be a fix for that to avoid any issues. I'm just gonna group this into its own layer convert this for smart filters. And now we have the cutout layer as its own smart object, no mask, it's a clean layer. So now we can go in, cut out, hit the stopwatch for transform, and we'll zoom this one in something like there and can drag this to the very end as well. And with this cutout, we can also kind of zoom it up at the start of the animation. So it's not just always there, we can kind of fade it in using opacity. So we can hit the, the stopwatch on opacity. Same thing as transform. We can also move the transform over a little bit so we can start it further down. If you hit command T, we can now see what we're looking at and I'm starting it off the screen. So now we're having it kind of zoom up and then do the slow scale up. And then with opacity, we can start it at zero opacity and then have it go up to 100. So we've got this like fade zoom in. Now we'll animate our game day text as well. We can also animate the, the gradient that goes behind it. Might as well, I mean, we're animating everything here. So let's do the gradient first, just with opacity. Can skip forward and start the opacity at zero. Have it go up to 100. So we've got that slowly fading in. And then with our text layers, we can open both these up, start, we can do the transform and opacity for these two. So starting with zero opacity, going forward till about here, we can crank the opacity back up on both of these. And we'll also bring them in. So another transform keyframe, and then the starting one, we can just hit Command T on this group so we can see what we're doing. And now we've got it swiping in and fading in. So all together, we've got the shake of the logos and then that opens up to reveal our main scene. And now the last thing we'll do if we wanna loop this video, first go up to these settings and make sure you have loop playback checked. But basically we wanna end the video exactly how we started it. So it started with just this concrete wall we're gonna do the same thing at the end. And to do that, let's bring our background concrete wall layer. Let's bring it up over the top of everything. I'm gonna hold option and click and drag this layer on top of everything. So now we have a concrete wall in our timeline up over the top and we can bring this duration way down. So we'll make it start around there. We are gonna transform it by like bringing it in from the left across the screen. So we want it to end as we're looking at it now, but the first keyframe will move over off the screen. So it'll kind of swipe in and then we'll loop back to the beginning. So we can watch how that looks. Concrete wall swipes and then the logos come down 
then they swipe, and then our text and image comes up. So all said and done, we have this nice five second loop showing the matchup, showing the players, the text, it's all there. Now this is a very quick and dirty way of animating your graphics and adding motion. I just wanted to show that you can use Photoshop to do very simple transformation animations as well as opacity. Beyond that, I don't think it's the move. I really think you should learn after Effects, Premiere Pro, you're gonna have a lot more flexibility and capability within your motion graphics. But really I wanted to make this video because I only recently learned this and it seems like kind of a nice entry point if you're trying to get into motion graphics, if you're tired of using Photoshop and not having your graphics move around at all, you're getting restless, I think this is a good starting point. Appreciate you watching this video. Thanks for tuning in. I know I haven't made a long form video in a while. I've been kind of taking a break for this new year after posting at least a video per week for the entire 2023 calendar, but I'm excited to get back into things. Probably won't be posting as frequently as I was last year, but I do plan on making more full design tutorials this year, so stick around. Around. I will have more of those coming out and if you want to get caught up on the full design tutorials I did last year I have this nice playlist put together for you I will leave it right here on your screen. Let me know what type of videos you want to see going forward I'm open to any and all ideas for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the support and I'll see you in the next one